If I walked up to you and gave this to you right now, what would it mean to accept this as a gift? What, what would that mean? You could take this and you could put it in storage without really accepting it. You could take it and you could sell it on eBay and you'd make a pretty penny. But is that really accepting it? What would it mean to accept this as a gift? You'd have to learn to play, wouldn't you? Put some time into it. Put some work into it. And then what would the real gift be? Is the gift the trombone? No. What's the gift? The gift's the music, right? I know that to accept a gift such as this changes your life, because this obviously is my trombone. It was a gift to me from my parents. I'm not really a vocalist. I just happen to be a trombone player who sings <laughs> loudly. <laughs> to accept a gift is to accept that your life is going to be changed. This is true whether it is a small gift, something simple, except the gift of food. What's that change? What you're going to eat. If you accept clothing, it changes what you're going to look like. If you accept the gift of a book, it changes what you're going to read and what you're going to think and what you're going to encounter. Right? Any gift you, we accept, to accept a gift is to accept a change in our lives. This is especially true of gifts of significance. I asked the question, what is the most significant and life-changing gift you've been given? And I asked the great cloud of all great stories, Facebook, and uh, <laughs> gathered some amazing stories, right? Uh, Andy Woods told a story um, about a gift he had been given, the gift of, of notebooks, right? Notebooks with some stories written in them, right? Well, what's the value of that? Well, these are the stories his father wrote, the stories of his family, the stories of his aunts and uncles, all of his family. And to accept that gift changed his view of what it takes for a life to matter. Right? I asked another person who told a story, uh, Joy Moorhead. She told a story about a gift. It was under the Christmas tree. It was actually next to the Christmas tree when she was a young girl. And uh, she and her sisters came out and saw this, and they asked their mother, what, what, what is this? What's this gift? And she was told, it's a gun cabinet for your dad. And they were so very excited because they were, they were looking forward to that moment when they, he would unwrap it on Christmas Day. And so they got to that moment, and they started unwrapping it, and it was sleds for her and her sisters. And it was the most disappointing gift she's ever been given because she wanted her dad to receive the gun cabinet. Right? It, it changed her life. It, it, the gift never actually existed. The gun cabinet never actually existed, but it changed her life because she, it changed her understanding of what is more satisfying, to give or to receive. Sarah Lewis told a story about a green sweater, just a regular green sweater. I don't know if she still has it. I assume she does. Um, but you wouldn't think twice looking at it, just a green sweater. It's the green sweater her mother knit for her by hand and gave her the year when there was no money for any, any presents because they were paying hospital bills because her father had been laid up in an accident and he had spent so much time. If I understand correctly, this is the sweater her mother knitted while sitting by his hospital bed. Right? And it changed her life. It changed her understanding of what brings joy. And it's not having your Christmas list filled. Right? A, a true gift changes your life. It's not the trombone, it's the music. A true, to accept a gift, it changes your life. And, and to not accept a gift, just take a minute to consider what a tragedy that is. Let's imagine Andy Woods, who happens to be here so I can pick on him in person. Thank you. Uh, let's imagine he was given those notebooks and he read half of them and said, okay, that's enough. I'll put the other half up. Never got to them until they were just lost. What a tragedy that'd be. Right? To not accept a gift is such a waste. We gather here this night because we are accepting a gift. An amazing gift. 
a gift of a child, the gift of a birth of, of a child, like a, a sweater, uh, some paper, all the, those other things, they have little intrinsic value, but they can change a person's life. But, but a child, which has such amazing intrinsic value in and of itself, and, and then additionally for this child to be who it is, the child of God, the, the son of God, who the prince of peace, come to reconcile us, overcoming sin, bringing God and God's creation back together and, and at peace with itself. This is an amazing child to accept. And we spend most of our Sundays gathering in the name of, his, of, this, of, of this child, Jesus, and we spend most of our Sundays really thinking about how does accepting this gift change our lives? How does it change how we eat, who we eat with, and who do we invite to the table? It changes how do we talk to each other, how do we co handle conflict, how do we handle reconciliation? To accept this child changes our lives, and we spend so much of our time as a church trying to understand how does that happen? What is it, how, does our li how, how do our lives change once we've accepted this gift? And those are great questions for another Sunday. Today is, is a different day, though. Because today is the day we accept the gift. And we just bask in that. And we accept that this child changes our life more than any other gift that's ever been given. This child changes our lives even more than the birth of our own children. I just had a kid. I know exactly what I just said. <laughs> <laughs> and so this is the night we come to every year we come to this evening this holy special still and quiet evening this Christmas Eve evening to say the same thing every year to encounter this gift to accept it and to, to just unwrap it and accept it and to say thank you to say come Lord Jesus change my life that's what I invite you to do this evening. Accept this gift of Christmas again. Accept this first gift of Christmas, this gift of which all other gifts are just echoes. Accept the gift of this child yet again. Say thank you. And let it change your life. Amen. There are many jokes made about what they don't teach you in seminary, and there is much that they don't. But one of the things, first times I realized uh, you just have to wing it and figure it out on the fly was uh, one of the first churches I was serving at, it came to the time to serve communion. And I broke off bread and I was handing it to people as they came forward, like a good boy doing as I was told. I was under a lead pastor. And uh, people had a problem with this. They did not want me to tear off the bread and hand it to them. And I had to think about this because I had a very intense reaction thinking, no, that's wrong. But I couldn't articulate why. I had to go back and chew on it a bit. I had to write and pray and just kind of contemplate it until I realized we're talking about accepting a gift, right? How do you accept a gift? Do you come on up? If this is a gift, do you come on up and start grabbing? No, you come on up and you receive and then you say, thank you. This is the gift that we are offered this night. It is freely given to us for us to accept, as freely given as Christ gave it to his disciples. The thing is, he didn't worry about his disciples, I didn't point this out, is afterwards I did start using what I now call the holy hand sanitizer. Because <laughs> everyone was very concerned about their hands being clean. Because they knew their hands were clean, they just didn't realize that the people had whatever. So now you know that my hands are clean. So, where was I? This is the gift that Jesus gave to his disciples when he gathered them together for that Last Supper so many years ago. It's the gift he gave them, one of the most important gifts he had to offer, because he offered them himself. He offered them the bread, and he broke the bread. And he gave to them, saying, take and eat. This is my body, it is broken for you. Do this as often as you eat this meal in remembrance of me. And during the supper, he took the cup, and he blessed it, and he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and drink, all of you. This is my blood, the blood of the new covenant, poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you eat this meal in remembrance of me. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, 
We thank you for this gift. We thank you for all the gifts that you give us, and we thank you at this time for this, this gift of bread, this gift of cup. We, we pray that you would send your spirit upon it, and that it would be for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, whose birth we celebrate this holy evening. We ask that it would change us and empower us and transform us as every gift that we receive that you offer does. Amen. Now this gift is offered to all who wish to partake of it. it. You need not be Methodist. You need not be really anything. You just need to be willing to come forward and to accept what you are given. Please come forward. We always light candles at Christmas, Christmas Eve. And it always seems fitting for the nights get dark very quickly, the cold, no sight of green, and uh, we need a little bit of light. I've been experiencing this personally the last week or so. This church has received more requests for assistance than it has in the last six months combined. Um, there's a lot of people right now for whom this time is desperate. A lot of time the, the utility bills are getting mighty high, right? And um, to have a little bit of light to hold on to is important. Thankfully, uh, Someone handed me a check for $1,000 two days ago, and I was able, I've been able to say yes to every person who has asked. Thank God. We can't say, we can't fix everything. We're not Jesus. But we can be a little bit of light to those for whom these times can be desperate. Take this light out into the world. Take the candle with you. Light it tomorrow if you so choose. It's a sign of your calling to be light, the light of Christ, for the sign that the light comes in the world and the dark does not overcome it. There is a tradition I want to tell you about before we go our separate ways. Over here is a manger, and every year at this time we, we have what we call the March of the Manger, and uh, we are using the, this time for the members of the church. If you want to go above and beyond in your support of the ministries of the church, this is the time. And let me tell you what that does. There are pastors being trained in South Africa because of what's going to be put in that manger. There are pe children who will not get malaria because of what is put in that manger. There are churches across America that will be revitalized because of what you put in that manger. This, ch this church is, is going to send out a $5,000 check to do these things this month. Anything that goes in there supports that. If you are here as a guest, your presence is your gift. Thank you. If you're here as a member, this is your opportunity to support what we do as a church one step further. Receive now the benediction. Go forth, and may the darkness overwhelm you. May the light always guide you, and may you always accept the gift that is given this evening. Go forth now in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.